Greetings. This is the second part of um, the um, podcast. I'm sorry, not podcast. The video on um, hate crimes and terrorism. And I'd like to go ahead and start talking about some work of um, some scholars who have done some really uh, useful research. For example, Rappaport in 2004 analyzed um, terrorism waves of the past 125 years. And I think it's important to also think about when you look at hate crimes, begin to take a look at the history of hate crimes as well. Obviously different, but some similarities there as well. Uh, the first wave, um, according to Rappaport, uh, were basically based on the anarchists who um, focused on assassinating government officials. And this wave began in the 1880s and wrapped up somewhere in, in the 1920s. And then we see from this time period to around the 1960s, we see the anti-colonial wave. And, and so here, if you think about it, we move away from religion when you have the anarchists and then you have anti-colonial. This takes us, you know, uh, in almost a hundred year period. The third wave, interestingly enough, were the new left terrorists that we see in the 60s and, and, and the 70s. And then the fourth wave basically were considered the religious terrorists. And Rappaport believes that the religious terrorist wave will last around um, until the 2025 time and will be replaced with a new one. And, you know, big question is what will that look like? Some would argue terror genocide. And, um, you know, where you see terrorism and genocide kind of combined in, uh, in, in a way. And, 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 and you may see some, some um, and you see the nature of terrorism and the types of terrorism start, start changing as well. And, and so I think it's important to look at, at, at the history. And there certainly may be multiple terrorist groups operating at any particular time, but there may be a dominant one as, as well. Some of the factors that Rappaport analyzes in, in looking at all of this are the transformations in communication and transportation. If you think about the last 125 years, there have been some major changes in, in transportation, for, for example, and, and then also in communication. Uh, the, some of you have never, were not born... Um, prior to the the internet and, and so you may have no idea you may be thinking how could someone live without the internet or with cell phones or uh, the, the like and uh, Twitter and and Facebook and, and all that of course this depends on your age and whether you're using the the uh, technology or not someone like myself an old man you know I tell my students that when I first started working in the the field in the forensic field, I didn't even have access to a computer. That the first computer was an Apple II writer and you just played games on it and did a little bit of word processing. If someone needed to contact me, if my office needed to contact me and I was in the field, I had this pager. looked like an uh, electric razor and you wore it around your, your uh, belt and it would beep. And then someone from the office voice would uh, you, you know, say, please call the office, which meant if I was in my car, I have to pull over on the side of the road somewhere and insert a dime into a phone booth, you know, to call. Now, think about, and this was used in crime. I remember back when I was very young, drug dealers had pagers, and that was the big thing back then. Oh, think about how things have changed uh, in, in that particular time frame. And then the doctrine or the culture. And of course, that has transformed and changed as well. And the different types of actors. Are they focusing, uh, you know, are we focusing on someone that's local or national or international and uh, the actual organizational structure, how that's set up and how other uh, countries interact with all of this? Uh, he analyzes the role of gender and also the types of terrorist activities, that certainly there would be a big difference between cyber terrorism and a bombing, both being a terrorist activity, but uh, very different in type and outcome and in how we would police that, uh, disrupt that, prevent it, protect from that, and so on. Rappaport points out that, uh, that each wave has a dominant type, but can always be replaced by a new type 
when terrorist organizations fail to get new members. That's one of the ways to decrease a particular terrorist group is to cut off their membership and to discourage, somehow set it up so, so people are discouraged from joining as opposed to having situations where people are encouraged and motivated to join. So that's one of the first things I, I, Rappaport, I think, points out of, of great relevance if you're thinking about decreasing terrorism is how do you basically, uh, you know, stop, how, how do you basically stop the membership uh, drive? And, and then Kaplan comes along in 2007 article and, and talks about a fifth wave of terrorism that he says is already here, and he calls that the new tribalism. And so this is very different. This is a, um, a utopian type of, of terrorist group that wants to create a new world. And actually, Kaplan points out this begins with the Khmer Rouge in Cambodia in the 1970s with Pol Pot. And if you're taking my genocide class, you'll read about the Cambodian genocide and uh, the factors related to that genocide. But that type of leadership, that type of belief system, ideology, and practice is what Kaplan believes is the fifth wave or the new tribalism. I don't hear this being discussed in the press. Uh, someone needs to send all those fancy news stations Kaplan's work uh, and have them review it, or at least get Kaplan or someone uh, to talk about this. Some of the characteristics of this fifth wave include a radical break from previous terrorist models, withdrawal from society, a new calendar, purity, internal violence, genocidal violence, a new race, socialization of children to a new model, rape, lo a local focus, authoritarianism with a charismatic leader, and also religion combined with ap apocalyptic type violence. Okay, so we might think, okay, Kaplan's talking about terrorism, but certainly that relates to genocide, and certainly that relates to extreme violent hate groups. Uh, again, I think the goal in the scientific endeavor here is to start differentiating and looking at some of the particulars, where they're similar, where they're, they're different, but there seems to be some overarching themes that um, merge here. And then Sedgwick in 2007 talked about uh, the inspirational factor of global terrorism waves and looked at successful terrorist groups that tend to follow patterns of other successful terrorist groups. And when a ideology, a radical ideology, is needed that terrorist groups will look at opportunities for carrying out successful terrorist uh, events and also uh, changing their strategy, strategy to meet with particular uh, social conditions. Now, Sedgwick looks at different waves, Italian, German, Chinese, Afghan. And, and so, again, you see differences here, although you see some common themes. And this wraps up this video.